Do you guys hear that? Is that boss music? Go naked and just go with the sword and that's it. What do I do with all this? <laughs> it says it in the title. <laughs> I'm a slut for roguelites. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Unearthing Games podcast. I'm your lead excavator, Nick, and today I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Jake. And we dig games. So, hey, uh, how's it going, Jacob? What you, uh, what you been up to this week? Oh my god, I've been so busy. Yeah? It's not even funny. <laughs> busy with what? Like, busy with, like, homework? Or busy with video games? Or both? Uh, well, it's becoming, like, there's the homework busy that I don't really do anything about. I just stress about it. But I'm stressing about homework while I play video games. So it's really not a good system. I need, it needs to be worked out some, but... You stress, but you yeah. stress while you're doing your homework because you can't get your homework done. And then you stress while you're playing your video games because your homework isn't done. Because my homework's not done. <laughs> yep. That's uh, about right. I like it. <laughs> but, I like it. But, but no, I've been playing... I've been playing a bit of The Division lately. I saw we've that. I saw you online. Yeah, we've been playing... Ghost Recon with with Phil, or that yeah. was... Oh, we, we played a bit of Wildlands. We played for a while on that, and then... Mm -hmm. We should probably go back to that. He just recently <laughs> just got us into Breakpoint. It. Breakpoint seems cool. I mean, I'm, I've gotten accustomed to Breakpoint. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, and we got lucky. We got it on, like, a really deep sale. Yeah, I mean, like, how could I pass up a $60 game for, like, $8? So... It, it, was, it was wonderful. It was <laughs> beautiful. I do love when my games are a hella discount yeah but yeah no it's just it's work and school mostly work and school work and work school. work and school work and school my classes so, aren't too bad are, is all is all your stuff still online uh-huh i haven't gone to campus at all Same. i go to campus <laughs> i so i technically go to campus to work but i don't really consider that going to campus because i don't actually go interact with anybody that i haven't interacted with on a daily basis. Yeah, that's that's fair. I, I get that. But but no, I, I don't my all of my classes are online, so I don't have to go anywhere. Okay. Keeps it pretty simple, keeps you safe, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's neat. Then again I just go to H E B and forget stuff that I'm supposed to buy. Hey man, <sighs> going to the grocery store, at least for me now, it's like a stressful endeavor because like you never know when you're going to round the corner and there'll be like some family of six who doesn't believe in wearing a mask. So like uh, well, none of them are wearing masks. And I'm like, don't breathe, Nick. Don't breathe. Just move just past. You just move past them really quickly. Yeah. But it's hard when they have like six children with them in tow and three of them are small children and they're like wrestling in the aisle. And I don't want to just plow through her children with my cart. Why know? not? I mean, I don't want to do that, but I mean... <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> anyway but yeah yeah so have you been what's been happening uh i mean i guess things have been pretty run-of-the-mill here you know i mean erica's job has ramped up a lot so she's mm -hmm. been really really busy hence why she's not here with us today on this particular episode she's right working so boo. get that money I mean, yeah, she gets paid a lot, but, like, if you, like, boil it down to, like, the hourly rate, like, how many hours she works versus how much she actually makes, I mean, thinking about it, she probably still makes quite a bit, but right. uh, but I feel like it's probably, like, not as much as, like, it would sound, like, if you say that the number is, and it's like, well, yeah, but she works, like, 90 hours a week, it's like, oof, Ooh. oof. Yeah, you know? it's gonna be a nah from me, dog. Yeah, but, but. so she's been really busy, um... She won't be oh. busy forever, though. No, she won't. That'll that'll come to an end at the end of February. So that's right around the corner. Dope. Um, other than that, I've been trying out a lot of different games on um, on Game Pass and just different things. Uh, I picked up a game called Unravel, which is a cute platformer mm -hmm. where you're like a guy who's made out of yarn. Yeah. So it's kind of. Is that the guy's name, Yarny? I think I think so. Oh, if but I remember, it, if I remember the ad campaign for that game right. Hey. Uh, I mean, I know it's a bit of an older game, but it's really cool. The game is beautiful. It's very well done. Mm -hmm. um, I think the mechanic is cute because he is made of yarn. And so every so often you'll hit a point where you run out of yarn. So you have to like look around and try to see like, oh, well, I must have missed a spool of yarn somewhere. Let me go and look for it because I can't go forward until I find it. Until you, oh, man, that's it. That's interesting. Yeah. 
And it's kind of neat. Like at some point you'll hit spots where you have to crawl up the yarn. But so I, I picked up that. Uh, we've been playing a lot of uh, like Fortnite, and Wildlands, mm-hmm. and stuff like, or not Wildlands, Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, it's still buying tons of board games. I think so far, just within the first month of the year, we've probably added a good ten to eleven board games to our collection. So, wow. So that's, yeah, there's that. That's a lot. It is. It's a lot of games, but like I'm super excited to play a lot of them. I bought my very first table hog. So I was about to say that's that's not your domain, man. Stay in your lane. I know, it's not my thing. I I even I even told Phil about it and he was like, What are you doing buying a table hog? And I was like, This game is everywhere. Everywhere I look on Board Game Geek, on Board Game Reddit, everywhere people talk about this game and have pictures of this game, so I need it. Everywhere I look, I just see your face. No, <laughs> but but yeah. So, so that's that's pretty much what I've been up to. Basically, run, run of the mill stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, sweet. So, um, I guess now that that's uh, now that we've talked about what we've been up to this week, Jacob, why don't you jump into your game? What what did you play this week? Uh, well, it's it's been more of like a month or so that <laughs> I've been playing this. I can't put it down. So I so my game this this week is actually a fairly popular one hades by supergiant games supergiant is the guys who made uh transistor and bastion games like that Mm -hmm. those those i don't really know how to describe their art style but it's 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 a very unique it's a fantastic art style like i i think it's great i I love supergiant games Mm -hmm. and they they carried it over to to Hades, and so the tags for Hades on Steam are action roguelite, or action rogue like, action indie RPG roguelite. Which well, which well, which is it now? Is it a roguelite? Is, is it a roguelite? I mean, you can't have your cake uh, and eat it too. But... Uh, well, tell that to Supergiant. But <laughs> well, they might not have put the tags. They they probably Cause it, cause, didn't. Because what does it say here on Steam? It says popular user defined tags. So yeah, these are so tags cause... that people add to this product. So I'm not the only one who doesn't know the difference between roguelite and roguelike. This is this is the one that I think it's roguelite, where basically everything that you do, like it improves your subsequent runs. Yeah. Where like everything that like like things that you do on run one will like increase your strength and damage and stuff for run two. And well, there three. are thi- there there are things you can do. Like you can gather you gather resources in your your runs and yeah. you come back to your hub area and you spend those resources to make yourself better. Exactly. But there, but so, there's some games that are, what is it? Rogue likes are the ones where not, not like, like one, all, all runs are independent of each other. Nothing mm-hmm. carries over from run to run that you don't improve your, you don't like improve your stats or anything like that for the next runs. Those are rogue. So, likes. so risk of rain would be a rogue like, yes, because nothing like, you do, all nothing of, all you of do your past the... runs don't matter on the next run. The only thing that's yeah. changed is you. You've supposedly gotten better at the game and can play better and get farther. And we haven't played Risk of Rain in a long time. We need to play. No, that. we. Yeah, we have. Anyway, Sorry. Back to Hades. Back okay. to Hades. Hades. Rogue Hades. Light. Rogue Light. <laughs> so you take on the character of Zagreus, who is the son of the Lord of the Underworld, Hades, and. You are fed up with your life. Just, you hate it in the underworld. One of those spoiled rich kids. He's tired of his posh life and wants he's to go tired of it. make it hard I on mean, himself. It, and let's say Hades isn't exactly the best person to start off with. I mean, so, he's just an overprotective dad, right? I mean... I mean, it's not even that he's an overprotective dad. He's an overprotective husband is really what it well, is. Well, maybe a bit of so, <laughs> because So you figure out like the reason why Zagreus is leaving is because his mother left and he didn't and he de- he never knew her so he wants to go find her and okay. he's getting help he's getting help from all of the other underworld gods like Nyx and no actually I think Nyx is really the only one who's really helping you well, she's well, the I mean, one because you, you're also getting aid from the gods of Olympus right that's well, the, the, the boons or whatever that yeah you get. so yes and like throughout your run as you as you're fighting through the levels of the underworld, you'll run across rooms that will grant you a boon of. They have like ten, I think, Olympian gods. 
That sounds obviously, right. obviously you have the big two, Poseidon and Zeus. Then there, then you have all of the other lesser ones. You know, Ares, Athena, Aphrodite, Dionysus is my favorite. Dionysus, my is man, pretty he's pretty Dionysus. Uh, he's, his his voice acting, it's like some chill bro at like a frat party and all that. Like, he's the guy that's like he's been smoking way too much of something. And he's in the corner like, hey man, how's yo, it going? Have a self drink man. and sit down. <laughs> Zach, man, like, I, you must really, I, man, you have to get up here. And so they all want you to come to Olympus, right? That's, yes. that's, their, that's their entire reason for helping you, is that they think that you're trying to get to Olympus when in reality you're trying to find your mother. But they don't need to know that. Yeah. And so, and as, and so you fight through three levels of the underworld. You fight through Tartarus is your first one. It's the easy place. Which is funny, because Tartarus is supposed to be, like, where all the really bad people are stored. Like, that's, you have to do some really, really bad shit it's like to the, get put into Tartarus. It's like the circle of hell kind of thing, you know? It's the, the yeah. where, where the lowest of the low go. Yeah. So, it's fun. Every And every room that you run through has, like, you know what you're going to get whenever you pick a room to run through. Because when you ran through the previous room... It gave you a little pop-up over... Sometimes you'll get multiple options of which door you want to take. And they'll show you the rewards on the door for the next room. Okay. So they can be anything from uh, darkness, which is used to level yourself up. Basically, you have so many abilities that you can pour darkness into to make yourself better. Okay. Uh, sometimes there'll be boons. They'll show you what, what Olympian god is going to help you this time. Yeah, like a like a lightning bolt for Zeus or something like that, right? Yeah, or or a heart for uh Aphrodite. for Aphrodite or a, a trident. There's actually a couple of tridents because there's a trident for Ares and a trident for Poseidon. That's it's right. This is red red and blue. You can also find uh nectar, which is used to actually increase your standing with people you can talk to around okay. the world. Because like every so often every Every level of the underworld has a an NPC that you can go talk to. That's right. I think I met the one in Tartarus. It's um Sisyphus, it's Sisy- right? It's Sisyphus the guy who has to and push Tartarus. Push the boulder up the up the mountain yeah. forever. And and it's a really nice respite because you don't fight them. Yeah, you you just go talk to them, and they 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 give you things. But you can give nectar to them to make them happier, and it unlocks more dialogue, and. Actually, the first one you give, the first bottle of nectar you give every NPC that that you could possibly give nectar to, yeah. will give you an item that you can use on your runs to <laughs> to make it better, to make yourself better. My favorite okay. is is the one you get from the training dummy, the one that gives you a second chance whenever you die. Oh yeah, it's it's like a tooth or something, right? Yeah, it's a tooth. <laughs> I, I love I, that. That one's my favorite. Uh, there are some that will like get better as you do things throughout the run, like the one you get from Hermes. Uh, as if you clear a level within the certain amount of time that it gives you, you get you get a percentage of dodge, like a dodge oh. chance upgrade. The plume is nice because dodge is basically they swing and miss. Like you don't have to do anything. It kind of gives you a chance where if you failed if you failed to dodge on your own. It'll give you a chance that they might just miss. Yeah, like yeah. if if you fail if you fail the dash, you know, because they're all they're all dash. Yes, they're all. It's, this is a very high like high speed. It's an action roguelite. Like you're you're moving around, you're dodging. I play on mouse and keyboard, and my god, my keyboard hates me. I, I could not like <laughs> I booted that game up, and I remember it it prompted me in the beginning. It's like this game is best experienced with controller. And I'm That's like nonsense. I'm like all right, super giant. I trust you. And I don't know how you would play that mouse and keyboard. Like that just seems like it would be was punishing. Yeah. I mean, punishing, I managed man. it. I managed. I beat the game, damn it, on mouse and keyboard, boy. Don't tell me. Don't even <laughs> at me, bro. So, uh, there are some keepsakes that are activated keepsakes. They're they're really high level special ones. There's only like five, I think, in the game. That's the row at the bottom of the keepsake seal. You only unlock those when you have a high enough. Uh, bond level i think is what it's called it's it's hearts like you give people nectar and ambrosia and they'll they'll love you i've seen that like i saw that like because there's like a codex you can go into that shows like the information Mm -hmm. for like all the 
all the bad guys you fight and the different gods you develop your relationships with. I think even the weapons the... and stuff have codex entries, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. And is that the well, little the little the little hearts under the name? Like I remember, like if I looked at like Zeus, I think I had like two hearts under him or yeah, something like that. Right? You have so many hearts. At, at first, you get hearts by giving them nectar. You you know, he's like, hey. It's, it'll pop up as an option before, like for the Olympian gods, it'll pop up as an option before you accept their boon. And yeah. you have to do it before you accept the boon, yeah. or else you don't have that option ever. What is it? It's like um, right, for, for right, trigger to, right trigger to gift or something like that? Well, whatever button it was for mouse and keyboard, I don't know. It's G, man. Obviously, gift. G, come G, on. G is for gift. G, G. No. F is but for friends who do stuff together. U is um. for you and me. But, uh, <laughs> as you, but as you go through, like... As you level up the your your relationship with them, you have to give better things. You have to give a bottle of ambrosia, but ambrosia is a it's a boss reward. So yeah, I, I've I've got a couple of bottles of that. I was wondering what it does because I know you can trade it into mm -hmm. the to the, the broker the broker guy. Like if you need to get certain high level things like Titan blood and stuff like that, you could give yeah. him a bottle of ambrosia for Titan blood. Because I never really understood what ambrosia even did. So it's, it's, a, it's a gift well, item. So, okay. Well, that's that's the thing is that I didn't really do anything with the stuff I had until I knew for certain like what they were for. That, that's a so, like, good I way did, to go about it. So like I didn't use Titan Blood actually until you told me that Titan Blood is for the weapons. Well, I didn't even know until the first time I beat a run. Because I, I don't think you can use it until the first time until, you finish a run. Until you, the first time you, you win. Yeah. I think but, after uh, that, then you can use the Titan blood. I think I might have just not known how to do it. I probably but... didn't. I probably just didn't know. But yeah, you, so you use Titan's blood to upgrade your weapons and their aspects. So each weapon has four aspects, I do believe. Four there's aspects. three. There's three normal ones that are like Olympian based, or they're they're based on Greek mythology. Yeah, like I think and I then, had the spear one that was like the aspect of Achilles or something like that, right? Yeah, like you'll get the aspect of Achilles, Poseidon, and then Zagreus is all. All every, of them have a, an aspect of Zagreus, right? All of them have an aspect of Zagreus, but um, and then there's a fourth one that's secret that you don't know until you have somebody tell you, "Hey, I was told like this is an awakening phrase," and they'll give you a phrase, and then once you go to that weapon and you and you activate it, you'll Zagreus will say the phrase, and it'll unlock a new uh, aspect that you can buy. They're usually okay. expensive, and they're usually ridiculously powerful. So it costs a lot, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've. There was one that was really hard. Like I don't want to say like spoil anything for it. Okay. But there was one. There was one aspect that I thought was really hard because it cuts down your health. Like, it cuts down your health a lot. <laughs> but I imagine it's probably a risk-reward thing. Like, it's, it's like, a very, oh, it's a very go powerful in with 30% of your maximum health, but get 30% more damage or something. I don't know. 70% of your maximum health. It cuts 70%? It's okay, wild. Okay, so, so I was right. So, like, you go in with 30%. <laughs> you go in, but it's also a really powerful weapon. Okay. But I've just, I've unlocked... I've unlocked four of the six secret aspects. Okay. And I and I've beaten the game with two. Well, I've gotten to the two end. Two of with the secret two. aspects or just two weapons? Two of the secret aspects. Oh, okay. So is there I a is there a reward for for getting to the uh, end with that secret aspect? Uh there is a So alright, here's here's another thing. So there's a, there's a bunch of challenges that you can do throughout the game that are given to you by the fates. Yeah, it's, yeah, I've seen it, those. I, you know, I think I had one that was to, uh, it was like collect every boon from Zeus at least once or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, so Zagreus gets the 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 faded or the minor list of faded stuff. The faded minor list. It's stuff that's like okay, it's not huge things, but it's but it's, it's just like it's like you'll, the you'll fate said it's going to happen, so you make it happen, basically. Yeah, yeah. So you're just helping fade along. And yeah, there are things like that. Like there's one for every Olympian god, you know, get every single one of their boons. Uh, there's one for the legendary boons because every god has a legendary, except for Chaos, because Chaos is not really a god. She's a primordial being. I think Chaos has a duo, though. Could be wrong. 
Does she have a duo? That's interesting. Sorry, I, I never I, knew that. Off topic. There's also duo boons. My bad. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. On, on yeah, back to boons. If you have a certain combination of gods, every every so every time you accept a boon, they there's like a message from them. Like they they talk to you, but it's like a pre-recorded message. Like they don't actually it's see like a, you. A voicemail that comes with their gift. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if if you if they notice that you have somebody else's boons, they can be like, oh, well, here, like here, they're they're right here with me. We can give you like a like a double boon, and they they do, like some of them will, they'll play off of each other. It's usually a combo of their stuff. Like I think I had like a Poseidon one where, it, I think it was Poseidon and Artemis or something like that, where it was basically like I think critical hits would cause more rupture. Mm-hmm. Something to that effect, I mean, or or rupture could cause critical hits. Critical Something hits. Like that's that. interesting. Because yes, Artemis' whole shtick was 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 critical hits, right? Criticals, yes. And Poseidon's whole deal is knockback. Zeus's is all chain lightning. Ares is doom. Oh, doom is so good. Doom. And I would say the most powerful things that I found playing that were doom from Hades or from from or, Ares, or rupture from uh poseidon from poseidon but but rupture is like a later level deal like you have to level up to rupture yeah because was... you have to get a you have to get a boon that because a lot of their boons are synergistic with mm-hmm. with their own so like if you like if you have more poseidon boons they're they're gonna play off of each other much better than anything else well yeah like the first two will be something like that the first two or three will add knockback to different like your basic attacks. attack or your dodge or your special, or and then things later like on that. you get ones that are like, oh hey, every time you do not back, cause extra damage and stuff like that. Yeah, they all play off of each other. Yeah, and I don't know, it's just a really fun. It's really fun. I like it. it there's a, a whole bunch it of is things. A ton of fun, I will admit. There's a whole bunch of things that I don't think I've done yet. Like, uh, you there's a, there's a currency you get throughout the runs called gems. Oh, yeah. and you you can buy like a you you buy them to... stuff for the House of Hades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's actually a fate faded deals that you have to buy everything for certain places. Okay, and I, I, I only bought a couple of rugs for like the main room, so I don't, I don't know what happened. Not that. Buy it all. Buy everything for the kitchen because the chef is your friend. Oh yeah, there's also fishing. Fishing is kind of like you can overlook fishing, really. No, it's just no. boat. If if a game has a fishing mini game, you have to do it. You have it's to do just, it. It's just so you so during a run, you can find these spots in water areas, which you which are hard to tell what's actually water because sometimes it's lava. Sometimes <laughs> it's lava. Sometimes it's the river sticks. Sometimes it's. Whatever the river in Elysium is, I don't know. It's supposed to make you happy. Good vibes. I don't know. Good vibes. But uh, there's there will be like a beam of light shooting out from it, and that's a fishing spot. And there's an upgrade you can buy from the contractor who you spend the gems on to upgrade either the world or buy cosmetics for the the House of Hades. You can buy the rod of fishing, and Poseidon gets like really happy when he notices that you have the the rod of fishing. He's like, oh my gosh, like you can catch so many things down there. It's great. And and yeah, and you can go catch fish. And as like they don't do anything for you until I think they, I think they get you currency, right? Like I, the couple well, they, of fish I, I turned in would get got one got me a bottle of ambrosia. And well, yeah, but like that was after gems they, or something like that. Yeah, but that was after the run. They don't do anything for you in the time. Well, yeah, and then I think most they, of them don't really do anything. Like most of them, like wind up being like gift items or gems to buy cosmetics well, yeah. for the house. So. Yeah. So like, but you'll take them to the chef in the kitchen, and he'll he'll give you stuff for them. Like honestly, that's basically the entire way I get nectar nowadays. It's because I don't. I, I I get keys. I get cathodic keys, which you need cathodic keys for like the early game. Later on, they don't really do anything because you use keys to unlock the weapons, basically. You only start out with two weapons, I think. No, one weapon. And you use Chthonic keys to unlock the other five. After after a while, you have everything. So you don't need... Oh, you also use keys to respec that's true. Your, your darkness. But it, I think that's kind of the... I think that's a... Not, I'm not going to call it a pitfall, but that's like a, a, a natural thing for all roguelikes. Ro- roguelites. Where eventually, 
the currency that you would acquire to improve your stuff, like Doesn't it becomes null because you've unlocked everything that currency can unlock. Like yeah. once you've unlocked I, all the cosmetics for the House of Hades, what else are you going to use gems for? I mean, really? You, you, yeah, that's what the broker is there for. The broker, you can trade up. You can go. I can trade keys for keys for nectar, nectar for something else. I don't think Diamonds? gems are really there. Diamonds, maybe, but. But anyway, that's what you use. That's what it's there for. Like, I use keys at the broker to buy more nectar so I can make people happier. That's what I do. Okay. That's that's my thing. But, uh... But yeah, I think it's I think it's really about... Oh, the style of it. It's a top-down... I like how this is, like, the ending thing. It's a it's an isometric uh, dungeon crawler, almost. Not really a dungeon crawler. You go from room to room. So, yeah, But it's I mean, isometric. It's... Like I said, it, it kind of, I would say it reminds me a lot of like Enter the Gungeon style where every room is self-contained and you can't move on to the next room until you have cleared you cl- said room. Until you clear the room. But yeah. unlike Enter the Gungeon, every room gives you a reward, at least one that you like. Yeah, Enter the Gungeon rewards are super rare. Super, yeah. super rare. Mm-hmm. But but this one, by by the end of it, you're you're a god yourself. Well, huh, you are a god. Well, I mean, but, you're, are you a god or are you like a demigod? I, I no, don't know. I, I don't know what the terminology, how the terminology works for. No, for you're Greek a god. Mythology. I guess because yeah, because per- you're the son of a god, with the son of two gods, right? Yeah. So you're so you are a god. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's it's funny because you're the son of like. The god actually getting with another god and not Zeus getting with a mortal. Huh. There's a lot of those. God, Greek mythology is going to break itself. Shit. Oh, hey, you know, thinking about my Greek mythology, I think you... There's another of the big ones, because you said it was like Poseidon and Zeus. Well, Demeter yeah. is their sister. That's right, Demeter's so Demi- in there. It's, Demeter's, it's like old uh, Aunt, De- Aunt Demeter, basically. Mm, Grandma Demeter. Grandma or aunt? Because Persephone is Demeter's daughter. So that's kind of... Yeah, that's kind of weird. That's a well, weird relationship okay. because Demeter is Hades' sister. Sister. Well, I think so, the way that she explains it is not technically. Like, I think they're all like step siblings. Well, it's I mean, weird. yeah, they are all like, like born of what, what was the guy before them? The Cronus. Cronus. Like, and I don't even know if he really had children or if he like decided to cut off his pinky finger and that made kids. You know, and like that's like, Greek mythology is weird like that. Well, no, okay. We can get in. We can get in. Kind of like how the theories later. were born of the of the Titan blood after the Titans were slain, kind of thing. It's weird like that. Nice. Greek mythology is cool and weird all and at the same time. Weird. So <laughs> weird. Uh, have you fought Chiron? <laughs> yes. So, oh yeah. So one of the rooms you can get to is actually a shop. Yes. And the shopkeeper is Chiron, the boat, the, boatman. the boat, the boatman, Chiron, and it's hilarious because he'll sell he'll sell you boons from the gods. And it's funny because every time you go buy one, they're like, "Oh my gosh! Like that boatman is a good guy. He, you know, he, man, his prices are steep, though." Yeah, because you <laughs> have because because one of the rewards you can get through a run is gold or Chiron's obols. They're, yeah, they're, it's money. And that, that's 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 self-contained per run, right? So like, as you build yeah. up obols, you lose them when you die. Like they go when away; they die. don't carry over. No, but as you build them up, you can spend them at Chiron's shop. There's also a very I don't think it's it's an uncommon event that there will be a bag of money just sitting behind Chiron cuz Chiron's there obviously he's managing his shop but there's a bag of money sitting behind him and you walk up to it it says borrow 300 ovals <laughs> and I was like you know what I wonder what this is I hit it and Chiron gets his statue. Yeah, and I, I love like, Zagreus' response. Zagreus's response is always, "But you left it lying around, and you know you that I take here. everything I find. Yeah. So why would you do this?" <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, and then you have to go fight Chiron. That is a hard fight. He's an optional boss. He is, but it's so hard. I kind of wish that that, like, I know it's RNG. The whole thing is RNG, but I, mm. I like it when that boss fight happens earlier in the run because it, when, the reward for beating him is a discount card. For the rest of the run, so okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, I've never you get that him. you get that discount card. It's like fifteen percent off of all of your subsequent purchases, but only for that run. So oh, that's nice. But it's hard. I've only beaten him once. I fought him like three or four no. times. I've only beaten him no. once. No, Chiron is hard. 
and like and it's funny because so I died to him and I go back and so the the one who's like running the line of of dead people coming up to Hades to be like hey I, I want stuff it's Hypnos and he's always asleep it's, it's wonderful and so you walk up to him and you can talk to him and he'll make him he'll make some snide remark about who you died to and he'll be really condescending he's funny <laughs> and uh if you die to Chiron, he's like, what were you thinking? Like, why would you do that? That's so stupid. You go to Nyx, and, like, you know, Chiron is Nyx's son. And yeah. and she, even she'll be like, are you stupid? Yeah. Like, why would you t- steal from him? He's, he's like so one of the powerful. most powerful beings in the underworld. It's like, and he's so, and he, oh, he's such a greedy bastard. Why would you steal from Chiron? <laughs> And, and like she'll roast you for fighting him. Everybody roasts you for fighting him. Yeah, because it's like you're an idiot. Like nobody fights Chiron. Chiron's invincible. <laughs> but it's funny. Go pet Cerberus. Ah, that, the House of Hades. House of Hades is so much fun. It's great. Cer- Cerberus is probably my favorite. Because like Cerberus. I think at one point, right? Like it shows up like he would be a boss. Because like he's you, not. you you give him like traits to get him to get out the way, and it's like mm-hmm. Cerberus vanquished. And then in parentheses, really. it's like, sort of. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah. No. It's great. No. When I, so when I first came up to that area, I was like, no, they're not going to make me fight Cerberus, are they? Nah. Because that, that would be so mean. Yeah, but no, I, I don't. I would have stopped playing if they made me fight the dog. I'd Aww. be like, nope, I'm done. Can't make me. I mean, yeah. but it's hilarious because nobody really dies. Well, no. It's the underworld. They're it's, already dead. Everybody, they all just get recycled. It's hilarious. <laughs> If anything, but, like, Zagreus is part of, like, people's eternal torment, you know? That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, well, part, but of, it's your, only, part it's, of your punishment is to be killed by the son of Hades again and again and again and again. And again and again. But it's only torment for some people. It's torment for the people of Tartarus. Asphodel, uh, who knows? Like, Asphodel is supposed to be the place where, like, the mediocre people go. <laughs> it's the it's the, it's the the average person's heaven. <laughs> yeah. And then Elysium is... Well, so one of the characters makes a comment on Elysium about how it's kind of just silly. That it, he's it, like, it, I knew he's like, I knew a lot of good people in my life, and none of them are here. Well, it's only kings and heroes here. Yeah, that's the weird thing about Elysium in Greek mythology. Heaven, the Elysian fields or whatever, mm-hmm. um, was reserved for like the greats. You know, were you a, a hero of great renown? Were you a great king? That's who gets to go into heaven. If you're a regular person who's a good person, you didn't go to the Elysian Fields. No. You went to the river with everyone else, you know? Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. So, and one, of the, one of the characters makes a comment on how that's, you know, death is unfair, just like life. Hey, I mean, but, that's, some, that, that, that's some meta stuff right there. Some meta shit, but I think it's fun. I think I'm, I'm going to play it more because I haven't gone through all the heat levels. Because yeah. uh, after you beat the game the first time, it gives you Hades puts a pact of punishment on your exit, and to leave you have to put on a, a modifier to the world, and it usually makes things harder. But and as you, but it also lets you get rewards. Like every all the bosses' rewards are reset. Yeah, and for you every level to, of you, heat that you can get. For every level, and you can get more. So that's how you get more rewards to buy more things. But uh. I'm probably going to be playing it more just to get more heat levels, get well, my relationships up with everybody. That's the beauty of roguelites is it's basically never ending. You yeah, know? I can play. I can play forever. It's wonderful. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, so that's uh, Hades by Supergiant Games, both developer and publisher. Yeah, I'd Super be surprised awesome. if you hadn't at least heard of it. Say Supergiant I mean, is great. Yes, they are. They are right. fantastic. Indeed. <laughs> so what were you playing this week so this week i uh well again kind of like you it's more been more like a month because i've been playing this on the back burner mm-hmm. um i've been playing a game called monster sanctuary uh monster sanctuary was developed by moirai games like m-o-i-r-a-i moirai m-o-i-r-a-i I it's two words moirai i yeah, think i so, I would Americanize that. Sure, <laughs> sure. I, I butcher names. That's what I do. So developed by Moiray Games and published by Team 17. 
Now, I've seen a lot of Team 17 games, and they tend to make stuff that I like, honestly. Nice. I, I think that they like to publish games from, like, smaller devs, which, you know mm. me, I'm a sucker for an indie title. I love right. me a good indie game. So, Monster Sanctuary... Indies, are, oh, indies are hit or miss. Indies are hit or miss. Indies are hit or miss, but that's just it. Like, you know, most of the time, if it's a miss, you only spent 10 bucks on it, so... That's true. Now it's 80s. Well, but but anyway. Hades, but Hades, like super giant games, it's more of like betting on a sure thing, you know, instead of yeah. taking a gamble. Like right. when you buy like a triple A title for sixty bucks, and it's a gamble, you're like, I really hope it's worth the sixty dollars, mm-hmm. you know. Anyway, so. Monster, Monster Sanctuary, Monster by Sanctuary, Mayor, uh, by Moire Moire games. games. So it's tagged Published. on Steam R RPG, indie, adventure, strategy, pixel graphics. Um. So it is a nice. it's a pixel art style game, and I'm a sucker for pixel art. I love I love the way oh, pixel art stuff looks. Of course you are. Um, this game I I went into it so like I this game has been in early access for a long time, and I think it only recently had its full release in like December of 2020, right? Uh, yeah. But it's been in early access for quite a bit. I, I didn't really know a whole lot about this game going in. I'd seen some trailers, and I was like, okay, this looks like a Pokemon clone, right? And uh, I, I will make a lot of comparisons to Pokemon as I talk about this game because <laughs> it's kind of hard not to. Like, I know Pokemon, like, I guess they didn't, like, I don't know if they invented it, but they kind of ran with the whole elemental type styles and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So the, the base plot of Monster Sanctuary is that the Monster Sanctuary is some place, like, sequestered from the rest of the world. Like uh-huh. it's it's like in this magical bubble that protects it from the outside world and it keeps all the monsters safe from regular people, I guess. It, it, when you talk to NPCs, they refer to it as the old world, which is like probably our world, like as you would think of it. They mm-hmm. talk about how like, you know, humanity exploited monsters and used them for warfare and like, you know, killed each other and destroyed the world with them. And so nice. the, the keepers, who are, are the humans that live in this place decided to take all the monsters and take them to a safe place. And so they used, like, ancient magics to create the sanctuary, you know? Right. And so you live in this place, and you raise monsters, right? Uh, right. <laughs> it's, it's a little crazy. Um, you've got, like, the whole classic starter Pokemon thing where you can pick between fire, water, uh, earth, or they even added air for this one. So you have four different... You get to pick, pick your, your spectral animal. So nice. there's there's yes. a it's like a, a wolf, a frog, a bird, or a lion, right? I went with okay. the dog because I mean, how could you not? So well, my, I my could spirit easily. animal. <laughs> you could easily what? Not go for a dog. I, I mean, hey, the <laughs> yeah. So there's a bunch. Like I said, it's got the different classes. You start off with your one spirit animal, and as you go, whenever you have a battle with these monsters, there is like a chance that the rewards you get from it might be the egg for another monster. Oh, nice! So, so you can get so that's how you so instead of like catching more poke like instead of catching Pokemon instead of catching monsters you you get eggs for them and you hatch them. Yes, basically. Okay. So every every fight you get into has a like a ranking system that kind of ranks you on how well you fought that battle, mm-hmm. and it ranks you on a bunch of different things like how hurt were your monsters, uh, were did you apply a lot of debuffs on the enemy? Did you apply a lot of buffs on your people? How long did the fight take? Mm-hmm. And so you can get one to five stars. And so a three to five star uh, rating has a chance of getting you an egg. For a, uh, so, and I think, a so five, it, I think a five star guarantees you an egg, but I, I could be wrong. Five stars so, is rare. <laughs> so it incentivizes you to play smart. Exactly. Right? Uh, like to have a lot of, to kind of develop like strategies within your team. So this game, uh, unlike Pokemon, whenever you get into a battle, it is a three on three. So you carry a, a party of six monsters with you at a time. And whenever a fight starts, it'll tell you like, oh, you're going to fight these three monsters. What three monsters do you want to throw against them? And so and it, it kind of gives you like some base stats going in. Like it'll tell you, hey, the monster you're fighting, he attacks with fire and earth. He is strong. He has defense against uh, air and he's weak against water. You know, it'll tell you stuff like that. So you have to kind of make sure you've got a team that's diverse enough to ensure that 
that well, you because you are because you are the monster keeper. You should you should know all of exactly. this stuff about them. You you know all the stuff about them. So okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And it, like all of the monsters, as you level them up, they all have really big skill trees that can change and diversify. Like you can't like I think their maximum level is 40. So you can't get enough skill points to actually fill out everything for the monster. You have mm-hmm. to kind of fill up the skill trees based on whatever strategy you're running with. Yeah, whatever, so, you want, what, that, whatever niche they're supposed to fill in your party. Exactly. So... <laughs> And, and it, it's really cool because each monster could fit two or three different roles. Like it might be a healer. It might be uh, a debuff applier where like it applies poison to the enemies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, but that would also, wouldn't that also kind of incentivize you to to have multiple of each so that you could, uh, yes. so that you could experiment with how, how each way plays, I guess, how yeah. each different specialization works. It does. It, it definitely incentivizes you to 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 have multiples of each monster. And later on in the game, I had a good two or three of every type, um, mm-hmm. or at least the types that I was using. Because some, I mean, much like Pokemon, there's a whole bunch of monsters, but you're only going to use like a handful of them. You know, there's like yeah. a handful that are like noticeably better. Right. Everybody wants their Gyarados. Exactly. And so you run with those guys. So like I collected, I, I did not catch all the monsters. Um, I didn't get the achievement for that, but oh man, what are you doing? So it it's like I, I really liked it. it. The late game is a bit frustrating because the monsters are all really hard, and um, there's like a lot of meta that goes into this, where it's kind of like you have to know how the different monsters might play off of each other. Like they'll kind of have their own synergy, you know? How the synergies work, yeah. How the different synergies work, and if you don't. Like I, I so, had to go, I had to go and look up a lot of the different synergies, like on the the wiki for this game, when I got right. to the late game, because I just kept dying, like I kept losing again and again and again, and I was like, how am I supposed to, to fight here? And they're like, oh well, if you haven't mastered the meta, the meta strategies, then of course you can't win the late game. And I'm like, oh well, that's frustrating. Uh, that, that does sound really frustrating. Because like the last third of the game, basically all of your monsters are level forty, so they can't level mm-hmm. up anymore. So you have to have figured out what strategies work best for your you, team. Yeah, you would have to have figured out what specializations work what, yeah. and what specializations work better with each other to actually do well in the, end, in the late game. Yeah, I think that's probably my only complaint about this game. Well, mm-hmm. that's one of my complaints. Um, the other complaint that I have is I guess the game doesn't really encourage... The game actually discourages you from trying out different monsters from like branching out you know because How so? if you rotate your team and try different monsters and level them up and stuff like that when you get to a boss fight because there's there's frequent points in the story where you'll have like a trainer battle basically where okay. it's like you versus another monster keeper and so it'll be your six pokemon versus their six pokemon right not all at right. once it's always three on three but when one of yours or theirs gets knocked they Replace them with another one, you know, until you've beaten all six of theirs. Okay. But if you if you cycle your Pokemon and try different ones, basically, you will find yourself under leveled for the boss fights. Are there? Is there a, like you can't grind? Like there's not well, like that, that. that. That's just it. Then you have to go and grind. And I I hate games that require you to grind. And that's basically well, what this does. Is it's kind of like oh well. Sorry, the, this guy has all level uh, 16 monsters, so if you don't have level 19 monsters, you're not going to beat him. Sorry, mm, that's rough for you. And so well, it, I mean, that, that, that part of... was a bit frustrating, but I think that kind of inherently goes with these with like monster-catching the, like... team-style yeah. games. They all kind of have that. Well, it's because there's the training aspect, and I mean, let's face it, training is a grind. Yeah, like that's that's all it is. Like do, real life like... training <laughs> is a grind. Yeah, I do like that it has it, it has the XP share that you get. Like you know, how in Pokemon, you have to find a special item to yeah, share XP so... with the team that's not being used. This comes with that by default. Oh, that's the nice. six the six Pokemon in your party will all Adult. get XP at the end of the fight, regardless of if they fought or not. Oh, that's so, empty. So I like okay. that. But all the Pokemon that are, like, in reserve that aren't in your party of six, they don't get XP. You have to bring them into the party to level them up. Mm-hmm. So Interesting. So it was pretty oh. cool. Um, it does have a, like, part of the thing is there's, like, a ranking system. Like, you start out as, like, a Keeper Apprentice, 
and you eventually mm-hmm. become like a keeper master or something like that, you know? Right. But well, instead yeah, of trying, going instead of going to, to Pokemon all, gyms, to get badges. <laughs> instead of getting badges, <laughs> you look for what they call champion monsters that are basically like supercharged monsters that they're like you can get you can catch that type of monster, but this is like that monster on crack, you know, like he is like supercharged, more uh, health, he deals more damage. It's he, the shinies, isn't it? It's the shinies, basically, yes. <laughs> And they're really Actually, hard. They are really hard. Are um, and a lot of them, uh, the champ, a lot of the champion monsters, the only way to get their egg is to find out the right strategy to beat them so that you get five stars. Stars. And then, you, then you'll get their egg by default. So yeah. like, do the, does the eggs thing, is it always going to be like the egg of a monster that you were fighting? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, okay. you, like it's like, because mo- most of the time the encounters you find, like you can see what you're going to fight like as you're walking up you'll see like three different monsters playing around in a little field. And you know that if you touch one of them, you'll have to fight those three monsters, you know? Nice. So you can kind of see what's coming up. Um, and so I, I thought that was pretty neat. It does have a great art style. And I, I do love that it has this big Metroidvania style world where mm-hmm. as you're going through the game, you unlock different like traversal techniques that let you basically go back to areas you've been before. And maybe and go to areas you couldn't get to. You know, like, oh, there was that ledge up there I couldn't get to. Well, I have double jump now, so now I can get up there, you know? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a great way to go and find certain monsters that, like, they only appear in certain spots. And mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. It has a great story. Um, the base premise is that there are, like, bad people that have snuck into the sanctuary. And they're called, like, they're, like, alchemists is what they're called. You know, like, they oh, wear, like, like, the plague doctor masks and stuff like that, you know? Um, and they like they, and so they they believe in science even though uh, they're like trying to use magic to destroy the world or something but they're men of science i i don't know that's kind of backwards okay. so the the base premise is that they are endangering the sanctuary and you and the other uh spectral keepers like there's like four ancient bloodlines of the four people who started the sanctuary and they're mm-hmm. the ones that have the four spectral animals like starter the starter pokemon right and so the spectral keepers are in charge of maintaining the sanctuary and so they are defending the sanctuary and so basically you and the other three spectral guys have to go and hunt down the alchemists to save the sanctuary nice okay. the plot the, the plot gets bigger and crazier but i don't want to talk any more about it without spoiling the story so right. but that's that that's the base plot so i really liked that and it makes you traverse the entire world uh the sanctuary has a bunch of different biomes like there's a a regular grassy field and there's a uh, underwater place and there's a snow place and a lava place and it has a lot of lots of different biomes that you can go to to get different uh, elemental types of uh, of monsters and stuff i was about to say it's like going to the safari zone to get ba- basically different. okay and so and it's it's really cool like i really enjoyed the game like i said the late game kind of made me frustrated because like i said it was the whole thing where you had to know how the meta properly worked but mm-hmm but it was all in all, it was a really fun game. And I, I really liked it. I, I love the whole party management system where I'm like, okay, well, let's go ahead and, and level up. Let's look at your skill tree and see what the best skills to pick out are and, and it, So it, you don't so you don't learn moves like you did in Pokemon. You No. You unlock they, them by by leveling up. Yes, they're all they're all unlocked by leveling up and like you can see in their skill trees, like you'll see all four trees. Mm-hmm. And so it'll tell you like, oh, you can either level up an attack you've already got. So like as it goes down the tree, like if you start with like uh I think the first one I had was like Ice Strike, where like the guy throws like basically snowballs at the enemy. Nice. Right? And the more you level it up, the more snowballs he throws. So it'll be like like combos, like one, two, three, four, five, you know? Mm-hmm. But like if you don't yeah. level it up, then it's just two snowballs. You know? Interesting. And so it was it was pretty cool. Uh, I I really liked it. Definitely would recommend it. I, I don't know how much replay value it's got. Um, I do say I will say that it has a lot of stuff to do either during the game or post game kind of thing. There are a lot okay. of hidden secrets and little nooks and crannies. There's a whole series of like champion monster that you can't really fight until you're either at the end of the game or after the end of the game because they're all level 40 champion monsters. Right. They're all really hard. They're all really hard. And so it, that was pretty cool. Um when you get to the very end of the game, uh, there is you do get the chance to get the other starter Pokemon, which yeah. I thought was which I thought was cool. Like you have to fight the starters 
but they're basically champion monsters and they're level 40 champion monsters oh man and if you beat them then you get their egg and so i thought i thought that was pretty oh, cool nice. but yeah Nice. So, I, like I said, I would highly recommend it if you like pixel art style games, if you like that Pokemon party management element system style games. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the monsters are a little weird. Like, I don't know if I would really call them monsters. Like, one of the guys I got was basically a little knight. Like, he was like a little dude. Like, he looks like Shovel Knight, where he's got a sword and a shield, and he's like this little dude. And when, like, when you level him up, he's basically Solaire from Dark Souls. He nice. He's a knight. And he has like a sun emblazoned on his chest and he throws lightning. At, he's, he's has lightning attacks. Uh, and and I, was like, I was like, this is Solaire. This is totally Solaire. And um, that's the plot twist, y'all, is that man was the real monster all, all along. along. <laughs> so definitely would recommend. I, I really, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, that's but, I, but, I, but I think I, nice. I kind of tapped it out. I, I haven't, I haven't beaten all the champions. I don't think, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll probably go back and try it out. It does have a nifty system where um, all the champions that you've beaten, uh, there's a place in the home base that you can basically try to fight the champions again to see okay. if you can like get a better score for their fight. Do better, do better against them. Yeah, that way you know because like you only get one chance to fight them in the wild, but right. then but then you could fight them again at home to try to get uh, that five star score and get their egg. They'd be like, I really want that guy's eggs. Like, yeah. There was Let's one there was one guy that he was a very weird like it was a killer whale, right? But okay. he had legs. So nice. it was kind of odd. Like I don't know if this was something out of like a uh, like um like ancient uh like some sort of mythology for like the 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 native people that lived up in like Alaska and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. I I don't know if uh, this was like some sort of like guy from their mythology or something, but but he looked really cool. <laughs> and I could I could not five star him at all. I tried so hard. Oof. Oh but, well. But yeah. So Monster Sanctuary by Moire Games. Go go check it out. Fulfill all of your Pokemon style dreams with fancy skill trees. Hell yeah. Yeah. Level them up. Level them up. You gotta catch them all. <laughs> so so those were our two video games. Now yes. let's go ahead and jump into our board game or. In this particular instance, it's a card game. Card game. I, I know we've talked yeah. about it before. About is a card game a board game, or you know, well, you can play it on a board. Yeah, so it's like I guess they're all they're all tabletop <laughs> games, right? Right. So the yeah. game that anything we, you can play on a tabletop, anything you can play on a tabletop is a board game, or is, uh -huh. I don't know. So the one that we played this week is called the Fox in the For in the Forest. Uh, this was designed by Joshua. I'm gonna butcher a name, uh, Joshua. Buergel, B U E R G E L. Buergel, Buergel, I don't know, Buergel. but that's who designed oh. it. The artists were Jennifer L. Meyer and Keith, uh, Pishnery, Pishnery, yes. Um, and this has been published by a couple of different studios, but the two primary ones, at least the ones that are on the box that we bought, are Foxtrot Games and Renegade Games Studio. So this oh, is like Renegade the, Games. This is like the third or fourth Renegade Games game that we've talked about because Renegade, they're just involved in all the good, all the good stuff. Oh man, all over the place. So, but, but yeah, this one was you and I played it together. Yeah, we we played several was, rounds of this game. I, I thought it was when actually I was there. This is the only neat. game I could win. No, oh, don't it's you the only get, game I could win at. Don't you give me that. That day we played a bunch of games, and I think I won like two rounds out of like the fifteen different games that we played. You know, I That's think right. I won like I say fifteen different games. It's like different rounds of different games. I think I won mm -hmm. two that day. Yeah, <laughs> so, of, any, of any game we played, but of any game we no, played, this one, this one was neat. It's a, it's basically just a deck of cards that. Yeah, I think I think the 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 there's four suits and I think the suit three. goes up there, to there's three suits. There, three there suits? are keys, bells, and moons. Yeah. What about castles? Four. There weren't, there weren't castles. There was orange was bells, purple was, was moons, bells? and then like the light blue was keys. Huh. Yeah. The, the, okay. I, I, don't, I, I think I think what you're thinking for castles might have been the bells. Because the bell was a Maybe. funny shape that, in my mind, orange. didn't really look like a bell. But when I went and read the documentation, it called it, it, it bells. Is. Okay. So all right. So three. So there's three suits. Each suit goes up to eleven. 
Yes, they go from one from one to eleven. One, one to eleven, and as as so basically, it's what do we call it? War. It's basically it's, just war. It's a lot like spades, the card game spades, spades, where basically everyone has a hand of cards, and in spades, the the trump suit is a, are, is the spade suit, right? So everyone plays one card, and the highest number that's played wins, unless someone plays a trump card, in which case the highest trump wins. Right. And well, and the trump card is what you you deal out everybody's hand, and then you flip the the last card after everybody has their hands, and that's your trump suit. Yeah. And there are and there are cards within the game that allow you to change the trump suit to better fit what you what how you want to do yeah. it. There's there's a lot of for for what seemed like a very simple game. There's a lot of strategy to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, well, it's, and it's. Their, their scoring system really incentivizes that because it doesn't incentivize you to just totally wall up your opponent. Yeah. It, it it really, but it also doesn't incentivize, you know, just totally losing either. Yeah. You have well, to have that happy medium. Yeah. So, like, I guess before we get into the scoring, so, like, the, the base game, the way, the base way the game works is that each person has like almost all the cards are dealt out. So each person has like a full hand of cards. Um, and basically each person has to play a card. So one person will lead and one, and then the one person, another person follows the person that leads gets to play the first card. Right. And, and the person who follows has to beat that or, yeah. or strategically lose. Yeah. They, they have, they're required to play the same suit if they can. And if they can't, they can play whatever they want, which could, which could, could mean they get to play a trump card. So, and like right. like you said, the trump card is determined after each time you deal the cards. Like the last one, you flip over, and it's that's the, it's trump, the trump suit. Yes. And so, but uh, and like I guess the way, uh, so like you you do that, and you go back and forth until everyone's till everyone's played all of their cards. You go back and forth, and, and then you count up points. Yeah, then you count the points, and the person who who leads, who gets to play the first one, is whoever won the last play. The game calls them yeah. tricks. Whoever won the last trick uh, gets to lead, unless they have a card that says otherwise. It's like yes. a lot of the cards will have special powers that are like, if you lose the next game, if you lose this match, you know, lead the next trick. So, mm-hmm. and then, uh, like you said, there were certain ones that it's like, oh, uh, play when you play this card, you can replace the trump suit with a card from your hand. You know, right. and there were, and uh, I think it was what sevens are bonus points. For yes. whoever wins, get get a bonus point for every for every seven uh for every seven in, in a trick you've won. In that trick, yeah. So I thought I thought nines were interesting because it's like if you're when you play a nine, it basically turns whatever it is, whatever suit your nine is, it turns it into the trump suit. Yeah. Unless, so like if I so like if I played the ten of keys. And you threw down the nine of keys, you would win because it would change it to the trump suit. Unless keys were the trump suit. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit or, weird. Or, right? un- or unless you were playing against another nine. That's true. Then, because then, then it only says it, Because it specifically says on the nine card when there's only one nine in play. Yeah. And like, you really have to pay attention to what the cards say. Because it, it goes to the rule it's read the card. That's, well, that that kind of harkens confused. to like read the rules, you know, and all that. It's like if like if if, oh. if a, a game that's all about doing powers that are on the cards that you're playing, it's like you better read the card you're playing, you know. Read them. Like only a few of them are like that, like the have abilities. Yeah, I think I think the, it's all of the odds. All the odd numbers have have a special power. Yes, because well, because there's one that lets you draw another card and replace one. Yeah, because I, I think I think I think it's the the one. The one card is the one that lets you, if you lose the trick, you get to lead mm-hmm. first on the next time. Then the three um, lets you swap the the suit for a card right. in f- your hand. The five lets you. I think uh, the five lets you draw, draw right? Uh, let's lets you re- basically replace a card. Yeah, you draw a card and then you put a card from your hand back into back. the into the draw pile. Yeah, and then but, and, um, sevens were the one that are extra points. Sevens are bonus points. Nine Nines is the one that transforms the, into a, a into Trump, Trump suit. And eleven is the uh, the queen. Yes, eleven is the, the 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 queen. Where basically, when you play it, your opponent has to either play 
their highest card of that same suit. So, um, like, if I played the 11 of keys, you would have to play your... Let's say the highest you had was a 10. You'd have to play your 10 of, of keys mm -hmm. unless you have the 1 of keys, in which case you can play the 1 and the 1 will win. Right? It says the 1 beats the 11. I think we might have played that wrong because I think we always lost. I, I might I might have misinterpreted that card as well. I think it might. I think you might still win, but it's but it, but then you get to lead the next trick because you played a one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So be weird. If, that'd be interesting if the eleven is really just an automatic win. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, about, I, don't know about I think that. it basically is like it's a neat way to force your opponent to flush out their, their high, highest their high of that cards. suit. Yeah. So, but and then, uh, um, going. Back to the scoring, like you had mentioned, how the scoring was kind of weird. Um, like you, 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 you go back and forth. You keep playing until all the cards are played, mm -hmm. and then, then you you add up all your stuff, and you get the the you're gonna wind up playing at least two rounds because the it's the first person to hit twelve victory points. Is it twelve or twenty one? Because you can hit twelve pretty quick. You're right. Twenty one. Twenty one victory points. Um, and the way that the points are scored is based on how many tricks you've won. So if you won zero to three tricks, you get six victory, victory points. If you only yeah. won zero to three, uh, and it describes that as humble. Uh, if you won four tricks, you only get one point because it says you're, you've been defeated. Uh, right. Same thing with five and six. Five tricks will get you two points. Six will get you three. Then if you get uh, seven to nine, you get six victory points because you were victorious. But then if you got 10 to 13, so if you won just about every trick, you get zero points because you've been greedy and yeah. the game punishes you for being greedy. For for winning to see, because the, then there was a time I, I distinctly remember like looking at how many you've won. So I was like, all right, I have to get him over three because then that'll drop him back to zero. So yeah. if, if he stays at four, I can just just beat the crap out of him because he's going to get no <laughs> points yeah and, i'd only get one point point. and granted i might not get any points either but that's a risk i'm willing well, to take <laughs> well no because i think i think you only you're only going to wind up doing like like 13 hands right so if i won four then you're going to get nine yeah right so that mm -hmm. that means you're going to get six and i'm only, I'm only going to get one point so but, it's a it's, but it's a whole strategically you can strategically lose in order to get more points than your opponent later on, yeah, yeah. that's I, I caught myself doing that a lot. I was I was always looking at how many you've won versus how many I've won. And I was like, all right, doing yeah. quick maths, quick maths in my head, being like, all right, playing, if he wins, playing two like more. Phil, playing like Phil, where you're worried more about what's going on on my side of the table than what's going on on yours. Well, but you kind of have to. Because... No, I know. Like, I we've talked like we've talked about how that's a very valid strategy that. That focusing on what your opponent is doing and how you can impact what your opponent is doing, yeah. it's a very it's a very viable strategy for winning a game. You yeah. know, it might make the other person a bit salty, but but, but, but this, it, but but this still is win. but this is kind of the name of the game because a, a big way of how the points are divvied up is how many you've allowed your opponent to win. What even if you still won, yeah, like they, they can still get points based on how gloriously they lost. Yeah, if, if they lost a whole bunch, then, then right? it's still, Cause, still, cause it's like, still I, okay for them. I kind of, it's like, I want to let you win some so that I can absolutely trounce you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I think score really wise. cool is if you, if you had a bit of a, I'm going to call it a bad draw, but it's more like if you drew a bunch of low numbers, you know, mm -hmm. then you would kind of basically want to force your opponent to win all of them, you know? Because like if you have if you have the opportunity to just throw away every trick, then your opponent will get nothing and you will get six points. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, because then your opponent's really like, oh no. They're like, how <laughs> do I really how like, do I lose? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're, they're, you you will find yourself at times asking that very question, how can I lose this? Yeah. Because I need to lose because I'm winning too much. Yeah. Like you, you never would... thought you'd find yourself asking that question in a game. Yeah. Like how would, do I lose? While this game seems like it's really simple and it would go really fast, there were plenty of times where we both kind of froze because I'm like, I'm sitting there and I got my hand of cards and I'm just like, I need to lose two more tricks. But these are all like 10s and 11s. 
flip. I can't right. lose any tricks. And so Well then I'm over then I'm over there like, damn it, I I have a seven here. I'm holding on to a seven for like for him to play so that I can lose to it. Or no, so that I can, you know, win it and get that seven and get a bonus point for it. Yeah. And it's it's those things that you're you're really just playing around with your own dynamic versus what your opponent is trying to achieve. Yeah. It it winds up being one of those things where it's I think we've talked about it before where you kind of have to know the person you're playing. I mean, like you don't have to know the person you're playing, but knowing the person you're playing and kind of thinking about how they would go about handling situations in this Mm -hmm. could kind of give you a bit of like, not an advantage, but like, you know, you'd have an insight for what you should do because you can kind of guess how your opponent's going to react. Well, I don't know. Would that really work for this? Because it is just, it is a card game. Like it's, it is is just like an art. It is luck of the draw game. Yeah. So, because then at the end, you're just like, oh my god, how did you get that one? You were supposed to, uh, like, you weren't supposed to have a one. You were supposed to beat me, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's it's all really, those things. It's a really fun game. I really enjoyed it, honestly. I'm really glad that we picked it up, because I think uh, Erica and I were at the store one day, and mm-hmm. we saw uh, Parks on the shelf at Target, and I was like, oh my god, we have Parks. We own this game, and now it's oh on the gosh. shelf. It's $50, um, though. Anyway. It's worth every penny. That game is I so know. fun. It so was we saw so it, We saw it, and I geeked out. I even took a picture of it, and I posted it, and I was like, hey, Keymaster Games, your game's on my shelf. I love it. Um, but then right next to it, we saw this one, and uh, I think Eric and I had talked about it before, where there's this uh, Reddit, r slash board games, where uh, every Tuesday they have a two-player Tuesday where, oh, nice. where they talk about, like, they have a whole thread. That is, hey guys, talk about what games you're playing two player. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a two player game, but they basically talk about what games they've had the best experience with as two player. As two player games, yeah. And we heard about this one. This one popped up a lot on there. People mm-hmm. kept talking about the fox in the forest, the fox in the forest. And we saw it on the shelf. And I was like, heck yeah. And then we saw the Renegade Games logo, and I was like, even better. <laughs> so. Gosh hey, darn it. Renegade Games Renegade. has not let us down yet, all right? Renegade knows what they're doing. Renegade but... knows what they're doing, so... Yeah, so the fox in the forest. I forest. I had a ton of fun with it. I really did. You seemed like you were having fun because you kept winning. I, but... I do like winning. I, that's, that's, the, just, that's the number one way to give Erica me like something. Just wait until has the time to play you, and then, then she'll dethrone you because she, she's the winner. Nah, she's nah, the winner's it's circle. All, <laughs> it's all luck of the draw, man. I can... I can beat you with RNG. If, any day if of the our week. house was the Hunger Games, she'd be the only person living in one of those like victory mansions, you know, oh, where, the, where the winners get to live. She'd okay, be the only one w- living over there. She wins Catan like three times dude, in a row. Dude, <laughs> if you go back and listen to all the podcasts we've talked about, Erica has won most of the games we've played. She Maybe won, Ma- she won Machi Koro. She won Parks. She would win this game. She wins Catan all the time. Like... I, I I love Erica. I'm not trying to like toot her own horn, but she's a winner. I love how it's just a I, meme I picked in the a winner, now. man. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know it's what she a, sees in me, being that I keep losing. But it's just, it's just a meme in this family now that Erica's gonna win. It basically is everything. like that's. We, we've don't even about, try. We, we've talked about it before. That's why Philip always targets her because it's like right. his his goal. Because he used to win a lot, and now that Erica showed up, she's basically <laughs> knocked can't. him off his pedestal. He and can't handle losing. He's mad that he doesn't get the spotlight anymore, and he needs it back. <laughs> he needs it yep. back. So, yeah. Oh well. But yeah. But so yeah, that uh, so that was it for our uh, for our podcast today. Um, yeah, we talked about Hades by Supergiant Hades. Games. We talked about oh, yeah. Monster Sanctuary, Sanctuary, <laughs> Monster Sanctuary <laughs> by Moire Games. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Fox, Fox, in, the Fox in the Forest, forest. by um, that was a. Uh, Published by Foxtrot Games and Renegade Game Studio. Yeah. Oh, Tons of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you all for listening, and we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Right. Bye. See y'all later.